Yo, what is up, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got another interesting video for you guys today. We're gonna install something on the M45 that I have not seen done before. It is gonna require a little bit of customization to make it work properly, but it shouldn't be too much of a big difference. I already kind of lined up everything to see how it would fit. And so far it's looking pretty good, but let's go ahead and check this thing out so you can see what we're gonna install on the M45. Alrighty guys, so here it is. This is a Mishimoto radiator from a G35 that we're gonna try to make work on the M45. So the cool thing about this is that it is a uh, two row um, radiator, which is a lot better than the stock one because the stock one is a one row and it has a higher capacity of holding, you know, cooling in there. So it should help out and ensuring that the temps stay down. Um, from my understanding, what the guy said about this radiator, and I hope there's really nothing wrong with it, the drain plug is um, broken. So this right here, you can see that the drain plug is in there. It looks like they tried to take it off and the um, top part of it broke. And I'm pretty sure I can take it out. I don't know if it's cross-fitted and that's why it broke, but you can kind of see that it's like at an angle. If I need to go ahead and release the coolant from the system, I could just easily remove the um, holes right here and that'll release the, the coolant if I need to take it off. So it's not a huge deal, not a deal breaker, honestly, especially for the price I got it. These things are going for over $400. Now this one is for a G35 specifically and um, I believe this kit, you can use it for a manual and also an automatic. But it has to have um, those two lines right there to connect to the transmission. I just checked it out right now and it's honestly in the same exact location. Same thing for the um, hoses, that one right there, that one right there, same exact location. Um, the only thing that is different from the G35 and also from the M45 is going to be this right here. The um, stock radiator does not have a, a plug for the top portion of the radiator. So I would just have to plug that up because we're not going to be using it because the top portion where the thermostat goes on that tube on the M45, which I'll show you guys right now, that connects already to the coolant reservoir, so we wouldn't need that. Um, and I think that would cause problems most likely if I try to use that. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all that I can see wrong with this. Everything else seems to mount up. Um, the only thing that I didn't see that was lining up was going to be these uh, screws right here that go to the condenser. But it shouldn't be a big problem. I could just find something to hold it in there and we should be good. But let's go ahead and look at the engine basically as you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's take a quick look at this radiator versus our stock one over here. So first of all, like I mentioned right here, this does not have that. As you can see, it's completely blocked off right there. And then if we look at this tube, it's right in that same area. Same thing right here, right in that same area. So that's not gonna be a problem. Uh, I just gotta block this off right here. And then here's the tube that I was talking about, already connects there and goes to the cooling reservoir. You have the coolant in there, and then those types seem to line up as well. Um, it's right in that same area where the fans go. The only problem that I was talking about that we may have is going to be with the screws right there. As you can see, it's on the left side of this hose. As we're over here, it's on like the right side of it on this other end, when it should be like over here. On this side right here, same thing. It's right in this area, as where this one. It's kind of moved over a little bit on this side over here versus being over here. So that's the only thing that I'm seeing being an issue, but we can make a custom bracket to make that work. This right here might be a problem as well with the um, fans. It doesn't look like it's gonna be in the same location, but we can also make a bracket for that. Let's go ahead and begin removing that uh, drain plug. Alrighty guys, so quick update. I tried drilling it out and honestly, that thing's just not gonna come out. Um, it looks like the previous person probably just cross threaded it really bad. And now it just will not release it. Cause I was looking at the size of it and it looks like it's just like smashed into the threads now. So I don't think it's gonna come out. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that thing welded. I'm gonna take it to my homie Nito. He's gonna go ahead and fix it up for me. And then I actually just realized that I can remove this ball right here. And then what I was thinking about doing is just buying a bolt to seal up that area and then putting some sealant on it that way nothing gets out that's pretty much it right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start removing the 
um, radiator fans. I'm gonna see if everything is gonna line up when it comes to like, these holes right here. See if it'll fit in those areas. Um, I might even ask my homie to go ahead and uh, cut these out and weld them in a different area if they are not lining up properly. But yeah, let's go ahead and start off by removing the fans and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, a so quick update on how everything's going. I went ahead and removed the radiator, not completely. I'm just enough for me to be able to see where the tabs are at and where everything is pretty much sitting. So right now, from what I can see, those tabs right there line up pretty well with these right here in the front. So I put the radiator fans on there and it actually sat in those holes with no problem. The only issue that I saw though is going to be this right here. It looks like this radiator is a little bit shorter. So right there, it's barely sitting in those holes and it's pretty flush on the ends. Now here's another problem that you guys are gonna notice is this right here. As you can see, this thing is covering this hole. So what I can do, it looks like this is just like a plastic cover. There's no electronic components that go right here. I can go ahead and just cut this area right here to expose that inlet right there or outlet. It looks like it should go a lot further down. Let me try putting these fans in the original one, see how much further it goes down. If it goes down a lot, we may have to make these holes just a little bit bigger, putting a flathead and pushing it out. Alright, so if you look at these tabs right here, um, from the Mishimoto radiator, it only goes like so far. Um, I would say like maybe the tip touches the top as where the original one it goes all the way through and it sits like technically up until right here so it does go down quite a bit as you can see it's going all the way up until that part right there so we'll have to make that hole a little bit bigger and hopefully that'll um you know make it go down quite a bit so the size shouldn't be too much uh different from the mishimoto one and the original one so that's what i observed from there all right guys so we got the uh, stock radiator out pretty confident that this one is slightly longer going up in comparison to this one right here and you can tell just by looking at these tabs as you can see it's just a little bit shorter and then there you can see i put the holes down there so that lines up and then same thing with this one over here it actually goes like this and you can see no issues gonna line up perfectly so the main outlets fit and then we got to cover this thing up right there and then right there those i gotta expand them a little bit but they fit now this one right here you can see that it needs to be moved more to the left side same thing with this one needs to be moved to the right side and then that'll be perfect i'm not really too worried about this right here um, i think once we get the bottom in we tighten it up move it to the back it'll be okay uh, this does touch it a little bit right there but it won't interfere with it like closing so we should be okay there as well uh, the only problem that we're gonna have is going to be um, with this right here I think it's still gonna hit the um, radiator fans a little bit so I'm gonna have to cut a hole or just cut a big chunk right there to make that work all right cool it's looking pretty good let me try to throw the radiator fans in there see if we have any issues with that <laughs> and right here you can see that it's like right above um, this pipe right here and then the tabs that go right here to the radiator fans um, they're not gonna mount up to anything so I have to find something to like kind of hold it into place the other issue that we're still running into is this right here as you can see it's not going all the way down and it still has an inch to go down um, to sit in those holes so if we drop that down um, that'll most likely fit some of the fitment issues that we're having at the top with it clearing the pipe um, again I can just cut a hole into it but um, I want to go ahead and fix this right here because I'm trying to bend it up a little bit to make the hole a little bit bigger and I think that should be okay but you can see right there like just the tip is right there and then the cool thing about this is these right here sit right in those holes so that's not going to be an issue but we still need to fix the holes for the condenser on the other side all right so quick update for you guys I went ahead and actually cut 
um, the bottom tabs right here made them a little bit skinnier so they could fit inside the holes because I felt like every time I would put pressure on the um, aluminum tabs they would kind of bend and I didn't want to end up cracking the actual radiator itself so I thought it'd just be easier to you know make these a little bit smaller so they can fit this one fits perfect but this one I just needs a little bit more cutting and then I'm gonna hit in my hole um, so far this is a perfect size I'm just gonna shave this down a little bit right here and it should fit perfect all right so for the most part we got all of our cuts done or that you can see I made that hole so the holes can fit right there the only thing I'm running into right now is this right here I'm gonna make a slit right about there so we can go ahead and close this up properly as you can see it's kind of hitting it right there and then to reinforce this so it stays together I'm gonna add a bracket right here extending out um, supporting it right there I don't know if I still have the previous brackets it's looking pretty good let's make those final cuts um, and then so you can see the bottom right you can see I cut it enough for it to sit flush right there same thing on the other side so it's looking good all right so there we go you got the fitment in right there it's not hitting it anymore and right here it's all good as well so the only thing left is just to make those brackets to hold it into place like that like i mentioned earlier making one right here to hold it in and then somewhere right here adding another one to hold it in as well but overall it's pretty good fitment's there should I have any problems with anything still good clearance on all the parts this is going to be hitting anything so i think i did a pretty good job on this the last thing is honestly those brackets at the bottom of this and then we should be good all right so now we gotta take this thing over to nido get those things welded and then put it back together and see if everything works but it looks pretty sick with the machine motor radiator right there all right guys so we're back i got the m45 in the garage and we got the radiator fixed as you can see it's welded up right there no more hole and then he went ahead and relocated the brackets right here and like i mentioned earlier the ones for the condenser are further pushed out on the right side on the left side over here they used to be right here as you can see where it was at previously and he went ahead and moved it so we cannot use that so we're good to go same thing right here went ahead and welded that thing up in there because we're not going to use that at all so i just thought it'd be better to go ahead and weld it since we're not going to use it but let's go ahead and begin removing everything from the m45 so we can go ahead and begin installing this thing i do need some coolant so i will have to go get that and I may also need transmission fluid because, oh no, I think I have, a, okay. I think this should be enough right here. All right, cool. So it's a good thing I did come home first before actually just going to the store and purchasing the transmission fluid because I'm going to have to add transmission fluid to the bottom portion where that connects to at the bottom. All right, for the transmission, I honestly just use the bottle and put a little bit of uh, fluid in there, um, little by little, because I didn't have something that was small enough to fit in there. And I got to get to a good point. You can see that the fluid is like right at the top. That's so what it is on this side as well. I'm going to have these caps. I'm just going to put on there for now until I install it so nothing really comes out. I'm just going to leave it there. And then now we got to disconnect the transmission lines. 
put take this out and then put the other one in and then connect it really quick so not a lot of transmission fluid comes out of there and I think we should be good. All right, transmission lines have been installed right there. I just gotta put the clamps on, but if it's with no issues. And then as for the brackets right here, as you can see, where needle moved them, perfect. Fits right on those holes, so it's not gonna come off. And I just gotta find a way to secure it on here so it doesn't move. And then I was thinking about possibly cutting this right here so it doesn't hit it, but for the most part, everything's pretty good. It's fitting where I want it. All right, so next step is we're gonna go ahead and put the fans back in, and then we gotta find something that we can do in order to extend this up, and then, or make a bracket that'll go straight down into this hole so it keeps it forward like that. All right, so right there you guys can see that I gained a lot of space now, cutting those things off. And then we need to find out a way to make a bracket to hold this into place. Once we do that, everything should be good. All right, this is like the 20th update. <laughs> but I found these 10 mils right here that are gonna go right in there. And one thing that I noticed is that the fans sit like right above it. So I'm gonna make a hole right there. So we can put this through, screw that in right there, same thing right there. And then before I forget to do this, I did order this from Amazon. It's an aluminum uh, bleeder port that goes in the back of the engine so you can bleed the coolant system properly. Um, usually it comes with a plastic one like this that's old and breaks over time. And then this is not going to break. So these are, you know, very necessary so you don't have to ever replace them again because these do break pretty easily. So we'll install this and then I'll look for those brackets and once I have that installed, I'll show you guys what the final result looks like. Alright guys, so here is the radiator now installed. Everything came out good. As you can see, this is right there. I made this bracket which extends down, holds it into place so it doesn't move forward or back. So that's good, that's not moving anywhere. Um, I had that piece laying around, it was just a, a metal, like, I don't think that's even metal, I think it's an aluminum sheet. I just went ahead and bent it using some heat pliers and this thing is not going to move anymore unless you actually purposefully you know smash it then it'll bend but it'll stay put i still got to make one for this side but this side doesn't really move especially because the condenser is like right here so it holds everything into place and we have some space right there looking pretty good it's not too close not going to touch anything so everything works with all the customization that i made to it you know making this hole right here um and then going ahead and putting these 10 mils so this can sit in there same thing right here and it's working um, extremely well i haven't had any issues with it um it's working really good i'm not sure if you guys know or remember from some of my previous videos i'm having issues with the m45 in the summer um, when the ac is on where it'll kind of creep up on the temperature gauge the temp gauge will creep up just a little bit so if it's sitting right in the middle it'll go up just a little bit once i let go of flooring it or pushing the car and or turn the AC off, goes right back down to normal how it was before. So I don't know exactly what's going on with that. I did take it to the dealership um, yesterday, so you can go ahead and check that out. I was hoping that with the radiator, it would fix that issue, but I don't think it involves anything with like the coolant system itself. I think it's something putting strain on the motor because it's only when it's with the AC on. And I feel like maybe the AC compressor could be overloaded or the clutch is not engaging. Or it is engaging, but it's causing strain on the motor, causing it to not spin as fast, causing it to overheat. That's the only thing I can think of because I have honestly replaced every single thing on this motor. I've replaced the thermostat in here. I've replaced the um, radiator cap right here. Just to install this is completely new and it's a two row versus a one row that comes on your car. So this is even better for your car. 
Um, I went ahead and replaced um, the water pump as well. Had a previous one that one was leaking, and I went ahead and installed this one. This is an OEM water pump. Um, I went ahead and changed the um, little uh, thing right here for the back, so you can go ahead and believe the system right there. Went ahead and changed the temperature sensor in the back. Still having the problem, so I've honestly changed everything. There's only one thing I have not changed, which I don't think is going to be the issue. It's going to be the thermostat that goes in the back of the motor because you have this thermostat right here on the same pipe you have another one going all the way to the back in the middle that's the only one left but i just don't feel like that that's going to be the problem so i'm going to go ahead and take it to the dealer tomorrow see if they can give me an update on what's going on because i already took it they went ahead and flushed this and i had air in the system but i know i bled it multiple times so i knew that wasn't the problem so of course i took it out started driving a little bit faster harder and it happened again so um, I just checked the um, coolant level right now, and it was extremely low. Even that's reading low, so I don't know exactly what they did. If they just did like a flush, left the car warm, and then once the car cools down, the coolant system cools back down again. I don't know if they did that, and it introduced air into the system. So it was low. I don't even know what they did at the dealership um, for that to happen. So I thought that was just pretty crazy that I took it over there and. I feel like I did a better job than what they did just working on my car, which is why I hate taking my car to the dealerships and all these other places because they honestly don't do a great job. So hopefully they can tell me what's wrong with the car uh, once I take it tomorrow because I already paid for them to check it out. So it just sucks that I have to take it again. But once I have more information, I'll keep you guys updated on this issue. But uh, just keep in mind, uh, the issue only happens when the car is hot. It does not happen at all um, when it's like normal temperature outside under 110 degrees, runs amazing no issues doesn't bog or anything it's only when the ac is on at that time but if you guys have any information on that or know anything about that let me know but i'm positive or i'm pretty sure that it's going to be the ac compressor something's going on with that to make the car get hot but enough talking i know this video is pretty long uh, hopefully it helps you guys out on something that you guys can do to your m45 because uh, i know there's not a lot of mods for this car there's no aftermarket radiators for the this platform specifically this is for a G35, made it work on the M45 with no issues. Just make sure you get the one that has um, the little ports at the bottom for the transmission. Because if you don't have that, you're going to have to add an aftermarket transmission cooler. That's going to cool the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.